Good morning, Chavra. Today is the 27th day of Tammuz, August 2nd, Friday morning. Tonight is Shabbos Mevarchim. Shabbos Mevarchim, Shabbos Chazak. And we will celebrate a little pre-Shabbos party, thanks to Reb Chaim Masoth at 645. 7 o'clock, we're going to have a mincha, 7-ish. <laughs> And then Kabbalah Shabbos, and then we're going to celebrate Shabbos. And about this Shabbos, it says that we have to add in joy and simcha to make sure that everyone knows we're not mourning during this during this sad time for the Jewish people, but we don't mourn on Shabbos. Okay, today's lesson. You think a uh, big Aveda is something that we should be all concerned about, but the small ones, eh, who's paying attention to the little things, right? It says, just like there's many thin layers, if you want to block the sun, you put all many, many thin layers could be even stronger than one thick layer. The Alter Rebbe now goes on to say that even little Averis that don't carry such harsh punishment may have the same effect as what we've been discussing until now, being cut off and being in that really dark place, cutting off, being cut off from Hashem. Ah, me shaloi over al. Even one who has never violated one of the harsher sins, punishable by excision, kares, or the death penalty, these the bigger sins, such as vain emission and the like. But other sins, nonetheless, they carry a great. Def they cause a great defect on the neshama. And we have to be very careful. In the analogy of the fine strands of rope. Let's say you're talking about that rope that has 613 strands. And you're not worried about it getting cut off completely. But the more and more the little strands get severed, the weaker and weaker the rope is. And the more chance you have of being cut off. Therefore, even though you're not doing a grave sin, the little sins can add up and can lead to, let's say, the need for punishment on the level of a grave sin. This would be even true, even if you're even if you're doing one particular avera that you keep doing over and over and over again. And it might even be far more damaging. If anyone over there in the back can please close the door, it would be very helpful. Thank you, Adam. Far from really damaging the self-same strand repeatedly, it weakens the entire rope. In this manner, the prophet compares the sins to a cloud that dims the light of the sun. When when it's cloudy out, is the sun did, did the sun disappear? No, the sun is there. All it is is just a cloud. When you go up in a plane, you really you fly right through it. It's no big deal. It's nothing, but it blocks the sun completely from shining down here. Sometimes that's a good thing if you're playing ball and you know the sun, you know the sun in your eyes. But if you want to go outside on a nice day and suddenly it's cloudy today, you're like ah, just just some clouds. Nothing. What are they already? The Pasuk says, I've erased your transgression like a thick cloud. And the cloud can dis dissipate. This refers to the grave sins that are barriers between the internal aspect of the power flowing forth from the name of Baya. To the soul. This is like the separation of a thick, dark cloud that stands between the sun and the earth. And your sins is like a cloud. These are the lesser sins that man tramples on. Eh, no big deal. This, that, whatever. Could be sins like forgetting to bench, a big thing, you know. You forget to do a mitzvah or you do something, and we'll talk about a couple of sins that may seem like nothing, but they actually are very important and significant. I'm dealing with the color, 
that obscures does a thin and wispy cloud. Sometimes you have a big, thick rain cloud. Oh, you know that that one's dark. It's going to start pouring soon. Other times you have a little thin cloud. What's the big deal? It's no big deal. It's going to come and go. When you have a, you want to block the sun from the coming through the window, let's say, put many thin little curtains, and it could be just as significant as a thick one. It could be, it could darken the room just as much. So to the analogy, the little sins, but they add up and they become a thick, dark cloud over a person's neshama. And certainly those sins that our sages often warn against that are actually light, didn't say they are, but they're like idolatry, immorality, and bloodshed. For example, my loss, I am in Hatzdaka. For example, ignoring the needy, walking by, oh, I'm busy, I can't give right now. The famous story of a Rebbe is going into Shul and is a beggar. He says, I'm late to Shul and I'll give you on the way out, I'm going to give you, knowing that the guy's probably going to be sitting there. He starts davening, suddenly it hit him. It's beside himself. He went running out of Shul in his house and told him to look for the guy. Like, I'm about to dive with Hashem. That's what I need. The guy's waiting for money. I tell him, wait. What if he's, he needs to buy a coffee or something to eat in the morning? He's starving. Concerning the scripture, right? Beware lest there be in your heart something unworthy. This word is used in reference to idolatry, from which we learn that ignoring the needy is like idolatry. You ever thought of that? Someone comes around collecting stuff. Like, oh, no, 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 please. Well, not that it says like idolatry, so I'm not going to argue. <laughs> All right, because if you don't give him, he might die. Well, here, I, I think the author was saying this, I'm more important than him, or you're serving something else and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're serving your own needs. And that's a form of idolatry, ego. So you're telling me you're saying something that you're not going to say. Okay. So then. So you're shalayan in your like that. I guess he's going to say it. Yeah. We got it out of him. I mean, it's, it, it's the order to. In, in, to what? To giving stuff? It, 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 the flow? It, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not like here. And, and so there, there needs to be a, a middle ground. Where you can That's why there's no bracha on Staka, you know? Because it's constant. You, have to, it, it, can't, it, it, you can't stop and say bracha. The guy's waiting to eat. Yeah, hang on one second. Let me so, 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 you know. So imagine, imagine it's like idolatry. And then the next thing is hamasaper. Vignus Khaveira he lashan hara shok of shkula kavida zara vigile rice and shit of or when you tell beer, evil tongue. You know, you know, you've seen these clips like this person Nabach committed suicide because they were made fun of, they were bullied. You know, it's just words. Someone said something about me and then I have no self worth, and then the person jumped off a, a rooftop or something like that. Like it leads to that. You see, even these these big executives jumping off the you know, hotels in Manhattan because they just can't handle facing the music anymore or whatever it is. It's all just words. Figure it out. But Lashon Hara is, it says it's equated to idolatry, morality, and bloodshed. And likewise, somebody who's vile-tempered, which means if you become angry, it means you're you're not trusting in Hashem. Why do you get angry? Because, yeah, but that was supposed to happen. Hashem decides it's going to happen. So you're, you don't believe that Hashem, so it's, it's idolatrous. And so is the arrogant, like idolatry. There are many such instances described in the Talmud, how these simple, seemingly, you know, say a bad word, you say an evil thing, and it's compared to 
idolatry. And the sin of neglecting the study of Torah equals them all is the gravest sin of all. Our sages say that Hashem has overlooked idolatry, morality, and bloodshed, but has not overlooked the sin of neglecting the study of Torah. So thus, sins such as ignoring the needy, hell-bearing, and so on, though they, uh, they don't carry the punishment of Karis and Misabdei Shemayim, Nonetheless, they severed the soul from its divine source. For this reason, it was ordained that in the course of the Shema at bedtime, one should accept the four executions of the court and so on. This acceptance is recited by even those who have never committed capital sins because they've done all these other little things that may add up. Through this big dark cloud. Besides all this, according to Soy, the mystical dimensions of the Torah, causing a defect in the Yud of the shame of Hashem, Yud Kevavke, is like incurring Skila. Here it says lapidation. What's Skila? Hanging, right? No. Skila? Stoning. Stoning. I'm sorry. Causing a defect in the hay is like incurring burning. So the yud is lapidation, stoning. The hay is incurring burning. The ice uh, above causing it to be defected is like incurring slaying by the sword. Slaying by the sword. And the cause of causing a defect in the second hay is like incurring strangulation. Neglecting the Shema affects the Yud and fill in affects the Hay. So that's something that we didn't go and say something evil, skip tzedakah, but we didn't do it. We missed fill in, we missed Shema. I don't know what it says about Benchik. And fill in and Hay. And what about this, the next one? Uvit tzitzis ba'ayz vav. Uvit fill in ba'ayz hay. When it comes to tzitz, skipping tzitzis, we affect the izvav and the prayer, the letter A, and so on. And we would be high of these things, this very grave sins, and big punishments. We thus see that according to the Kabbalah, the soul can be blemished through other sins just as by capital sin. So undertaking the four executions clears the soul of these blemishes. That's why Krishna, Krishna Lamita is very important, obviously, to expunge these things. From this, a thinking man can realize that for other sins and transgression, and the Rebbe adds, which one of the letters of the Yud Kevavke are related to, and thus, to which manner of execution. The sin of neglecting terror study, which is equivalent to them all. And all the above leads to the thinking person to realize that maybe I'm not doing the biggest, gravest sin. Immorality, idolatry, adultery, what did I miss? But when you do all these little ones, it adds up. And it's even even if it doesn't add up, even if you do that, they could equate to. So we have to be very careful. So what do we do? Yesterday we were saying we have to have a broken heart. First of all, we have to have a monas on We have to have a broken heart. That's the path to Chuba. We're learning the Gersa Chuba, chapter seven. So it's another step. So this is another step in the true and direct path to the lower level of Chuba. So when we feel bad about what we did, it crushes the clip and sitrach and it enables a person to repent honestly and truthfully, regretting his past and firmly resolving to better his ways in the future. Al it lays it out for us to realize, like, if I forget to fill in one day, that's major. So I have to regret it. I have to realize, look within myself and, you know, make sure to obviously never miss it again, but also to beg Hashem forgiveness and realize that... Um, this is something that's greatly, that's 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 a grave sin. And not just like, eh, big deal. No, I didn't hurt anybody. I didn't forget to, you know, get seduct. I didn't serve idol worship. I didn't have relations with some, you know. So the takeaway is shiva recognition. We have, to, we have to be honest with ourselves. No sin is insignificant and unimportant. I can't let anything, even the minor ones, get in the way. Because as they add up, end up being like a thick, curtain the more we do it and we eh, it's no big deal it's not, so that's why they call like the ones that we get that we trample on eh, little light switch big deal what's the big deal 
Shabbos, kosher, mikvah, tefillin. But the little things that Abba says, we have to be very, very careful. And when we do them, because we're human and sometimes we slip and fall, we have to go to sleep before we, before we go to sleep at night. We make sure to address it, to feel humbled by it, to break it, and therefore we'll be able to do proper tshuva and get close to Hashem, untarnished, unblemished, undisturbed, with, between the connection of our neshama and the Yud Kevavke, the holy name of God. And let me close out the recording. Good Shabbos, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Yud, we're going to do the challenge in about five, ten minutes. I'll see you there, Mr. Shem. Those not too spicy, right, Jeff? <laughs>